this banister um, I'm making for the uh, staircase you can see I've just cut the base out well, since you, if you can see it, yeah just cut the base out uh, I'm just doing it a simple, simple way with contact adhesive um, and I've cut out sections for the poles just to slip into forward one again just a bit of contact adhesive Fit so it doesn't need any clamps or anything. And it's a quick and easy Tudor handrail done. I cut these strips of mahogany out down the big saw down the aunt's garage. Um, big table saw. I'm going to uh, strip them again, work out the scale for the floorboards. Um, I know the floorboards were a bit wider in Tudor buildings than what they are and what we use these days. So we'll get on with that there and uh, I'll come back when I'm installing them. Right folks, here I've worked out the, <laughs> the measurements the 1 to 12 scale for the boards. Slightly thicker than what they should be. They're running across the building because that's just the way that the beams are are running in this building so obviously the boards are going to go along with that um, I've kept them reasonably tight at the minute I'm thinking that because obviously the beam's not going to be well it could be like the beam can be that there length of time but length of size but the actual um, floorboards um, need to be split so they do um, so what I'm thinking is gluing them intermittently and, and and cutting them all separately so I am which is going to be pretty time consuming um, I'm trying to figure out a quicker way of doing it I suppose I could put them all in there and just notch them out with a chisel to give the effect of the joints but I think I'm just going to go ahead and um, split the boards and just keep filling in as I go along and just gluing them in separately uh, I shall see how we get on with that there. Maybe keep the camera running for a while so you can have a laugh.
Let me bring you in for a better look there. That's done. If you can see the joints, just gives it a better look for the floor boarding. Um, what I'll do when I sand it down and give it a stain, obviously you'll see it again then, and everything will stand out a bit more. But for now, I just gotta let it dry. Well, here, folks, as you can see, I've got the um, the floorboards done on the middle floor and on the top floor. They're all glued in settled, and I'm just going to give them a wee bit of a sanding. bit of vacuum off. Here I'm just using some Danish oil. Just for the pad. The reason why I'm using the Danish oil because it where there are imperfections it will show up and that's what I really want, they want to see imperfections because you can see I don't know if you can see actually but it brings out the um, not just the grain on the boards that I cut the mahogany boards but also it uh, shows up the um, joins better now obviously it's going to dry a bit later Hopefully give the effect that I'm looking for. Also, is to protect it as well, obviously. Once furniture goes in and fingers start fiddling about with it and what have you, it'll, um, it'll need a bit of protection. There we are, that's the effect I'm looking for. Here folks we'll have the um, top floor and again I was nearly going to do it without sanding it down which wouldn't have been brilliant. Here's that wee secure pin. Just the light sanding is all that's necessary. And then with the Danish oil. Make sure you get into everywhere and you can start to see the. It's not just that it's bringing out the grain of the wood, but it's also bringing out the joints
I don't know if you can see on the no, you can't really see it so well if you get later on but I've uh, put some flagstones in there for the fireplace don't want to burn them through the roof It's amazing the way the Danish oil can transform a piece of wood, not just the floorboard, but it's an amazing piece of kit. <coughs> there we are, let that dry off and that's the uh, two floors done. Move on to the, the back roof after this here. And then we'll come back to the, the prior cobbles in a wee bit. Now here I'm moving on to the shingles. I've already painted all the backs of them as you can see. That's because I'm going to do it different this time. I'm going to put them directly onto the rafters at the rear of the building. So obviously it's going to be a pain to paint them beforehand. Now I know there'll be a difficulty with gluing them. But I'll be using um, glue and dials because of the paint the glue won't take very well I could sand each one out but because there's so many rafters um, it may get a bit awkward so we'll go along with that and see how we get on I'm sure I can somehow I'll come across a way of um, sorting it out now the distances between these, if you remember these are 19 inches so they are across and, and talk amongst yourselves there while I look for a pencil which I've got about a thousand of I can't find any when I'm looking for it I cannot believe that get another one from the drawer it's probably about 20 pencils knocking about here somewhere Anyway, back to what I said. This is 19 inches. Making a mark. They've all got to be the same. I'll just keep that distance the whole way across. I'm going to fast forward this here a bit. Put them through the belt sander quickly because uh, we're painting them all in one go. The, uh, the paint's got in the backs as well, which we don't want. It's to make it easier for bodies and, and steam in a wee bit. Now you see I've jumped ahead here by already starting to apply paint to the exterior of the building, but uh, I haven't put nothing on that door, so I haven't uh, on the video yet because uh, everything's got to be rubbed down and with all rubbed down filled and then painted again so I'll probably bring you in with doing that there or possibly when I'm doing the front right, everything here isn't 100% even because I've left this slightly bigger so we can chop it off the size later on but what I'm going to start with here is uh, just the basics. Uh, the way I'll be doing this here is again, it's different because I want the white to show through on the other side, so it did. So I'll be taking measurements from the roof down every time to make sure that I've got the, the height right. So I'll try and get on with a bit quicker. Sure you might find it a wee bit boring but um, at the same time it's, it's 
nice to see how it gets started anyway so it is so got it basically in place where I want it uh, just have a metal rule in my hands <laughs> let's go and walk about here we go this is the edge I'll be taken from Once I get the first two right, get them fixed on, then all I have to do is just check it periodically and um, job should be a good and so it should. So with this here first one it has to be on quite, quite well. Well, they all have to be on quite well, but um, this one here, I want to get it clamped and glued up pretty quick. So I'm just going to jump ahead in silence and um, be back in a moment. Here you can see where it's extending past where it needs to be, where it can be clipped off when it needs to be here. Now we have an accelerator. Once that goes off, I'll be working from this one here straight up. So, I right. gotta remember to be careful and stuff like that there because what I do now is going to be seen from the inside, and I'll have little hope of um, fixing things once they're done. Sure, the lines are all centered. That'll be the same the whole way up. Right. Hopefully that there gives you a general idea of um, what I'm looking at and I'll just turn it round so you can see the inside Sorry, the camera cut out on me there Didn't cut out on me, died to death But um
that's how it looks from the inside that's why I painted it white before I put it up as you can see now well folks that's the back roof on all the shingles on um, thankfully the wave turned out just nice on it it's achieved by different sizes of um, different thicknesses or after uh, quite pleased to make it a bit, a bit more effective once the um, once the coat of paint go on it um, but you can't really you can see the wave a wee bit so you can't obviously these edges will all be straightened off cut off and what have you when all the glue dries but uh, that's it for now let's just have a look at the the inside which I haven't seen this off yet hopefully it turned out as effective as what I wanted it to oh yeah you see that there that's what I was looking for Much as well with the chimney. So, just a bit of cleaning up to do on that, and uh, on to the next stage.